Hi guys. It is a lovely but a little bit chilly night here in June night. I've got a sweatshirt and a goose down vest and wool socks and alpaca slippers on here on this exciting Saturday night. Exciting Saturday night in the collapse of global industrial civilization. That would be Saturday, June 4th, 2022, where I guess is the biggest party of the year in Ithaca, New York tonight, uh, 20 minutes from here. The biggest party of the year, and here I am sitting here with my little dog and my little tiger. And uh, I have been out preparing for the apocalypse all day today. Good Lord, you should see the planet nibbling out in my yard. Uh, hundreds of dollars. And good God, I'm getting ready for the biblical flood. But uh, now that I have done all I can do to prepare for the collapse of a planet, and I was not planning to do a hopium rant uh, tonight. I am too exhausted here. But guys, it is right here. It is right here. And uh, I'm telling you, I, uh, I, I thought I had heard it all with the hopium ads. And this, uh, this article appears right under this ad to go to work for Amazon. What they're doing here is appealing to, uh, you know, to potential breeders, uh, you know, looking for a career choice where they can raise a child at today's inflationary rates. So I guess Amazon is, is offering 14 weeks of pregnancy time off, 14 weeks while you're pregnant, and after you have the baby, you get six weeks of uh, parental leave. I don't know if this is for guys too or just women. Of course, it shows the, the woman in this little adorable bundle of joy. And as the ad says, I have not done the math. That is more than 800 hours of bonding time that Amazon will pay all of their new breeder, their, their little brooder hens working in these uh, giant, you know, warehouses. Uh, you have 800 hours to bond with your spawn. And I don't know if that ad has anything or not to do with the, uh, finally, hallelujah, some hopium that I can get behind. Yes, we have finally found hopium that I am cheering on. You go. And we're going to go. Is this, I don't know if this is, are we going to go over to Japan? This sounds vaguely Japanese. This is a new term that we all need to get ready for here in the uh, <clears throat> as we spiral down. What is going on with these damn made in China glasses? Uh, there's something in it. What in the hell? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to wash my my glasses. There you go. All right, we have cleaned the glasses. So I can read. Uh, tasted pretty good. I don't know what that was on my glasses, whether that was a dead bug or what it was. Anyway, it tasted pretty good. Uh, all right, get ready for the newest term for the collapse. <clears throat> Taga, no, this is from the Telegraph, I guess, over there in England. Tamagotchi children. T-A-M-A-G-O-T-C-H-I. Tamagotchi children who do not exist could solve the population problem. 
There you go. And they actually mean the overpopulation problem is what they're uh, unbelievably, they won't use the O word because now, of course, the population problem and the vast majority of mainstream media articles is that there are not enough babies being born. Uh, that is the population problem, but unbelievably, the Telegraph talking about overpopulation, and we are going to solve the problem of overpopulation with Tamagotchi children. I am a full supporter of Tamagotchi children, and here is a, uh, I'm trying to show you this picture of a Tamagotchi child. Anyway, what are Tamagotchi children, and how is it going to solve the overpopulation problem? <clears throat> they will cuddle you, play with you, and of course, they will resemble you. They will require minimal resources and will cost next to nothing to bring up. If these sound like ideal children to you, be warned, what has just been described is a virtual child. A virtual child. These metaverse-hosted digital babies, an artificial intelligence expert has predicted, will be commonplace in 50 years, in the year 2070. Ah, uh, I wonder, you know, it, it kind of begs the question, in 2070, uh, will Amazon workers, uh, do, or, or, do you get 14 weeks of pregnancy time off from your employer to have a virtual baby? Uh, do you get paid 800 hours of bonding time with your, uh, bonding with your virtual baby in the year 2070. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you where bonding with your virtual baby is going to be on your list of concerns in the year 2070. But of course, according to the Telegraph, all right, will be commonplace. Katriona Campbell, one of the UK's leading authorities on AI and emerging, and I've always loved this term, disruptive technologies, made the eyebrow-raising prediction in a new book published this week. In her book, AI by Design, A Plan for Living, with artificial intelligence, Ms. Campbell argues that concerns about overpopulation in the year 2070, I guess, will prompt society to embrace digital children. It is a demographic transformation that she has nicknamed the Tamagotchi Generation. There you go. The Tamagotchi generation. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, okay, this is quoting Ms. Campbell. Take it away. Quote, Virtual children may seem like a giant leap from where we are now, but within 50 years, technology will have advanced to such an extent that babies which exist in the metaverse are indistinct from those in the real world. As the metaverse evolves, I can see virtual children becoming an accepted and fully embraced part of society and much of the developed world, close quote. And, uh, and guys, I mean, I am not joking. I never thought I would say, I honestly never thought until this article that you would ever hear me say, I virtual, I, 
embrace. Uh, I what do I do? Uh, uh, fully embrace. I fully embrace the idea of VR children. Uh, I, I, I think this is the single greatest idea that, that good Lord, this is, this is certainly the best idea that uh, I, I have heard uh, as far as how to deal with the population problem since, you know, sterilizing the human race is off the table apparently. Uh, since we're not going to sterilize the human race, uh, we're just going to have virtual babies. Now, of course, she does not comment on uh, what is going to be going on in the undeveloped world. The undeveloped world. Uh, not such a market for virtual children. All right. The metaverse is an immersive digital world. It is seen as the future of the internet and will be more physically interactive. Ms. Campbell suggests that high-tech gloves, high-tech gloves able to deliver tactile feedback might reproduce the physical sensations the physical sensations of cuddling, feeding, and playing with one's offspring. Yes. Ms. Campbell, I don't know where she uh, found this, Ms. Campbell cited widespread concern about the environmental toll exacted by the world's increasing population, which is now nearing 8 billion. A 2020 YouGov study into why couples choose not to have children found that nearly 10% remain childless because of overpopulation concerns while a further 10% choose not to start a family because of the cost of raising a child. So, you know, good for the, you know, I mean, all joking aside, guys, good for the Telegraph. Uh, this is the first, this, uh, the Telegraph has more balls uh, than any other mainstream media outlet. Nobody is using the O word. Uh, but the Telegraph has no problem with it, except maybe in their headline. Good for the Telegraph. All right. Many research uh, now. Now we get to the uh, you know the flip side. Many researchers now believe that declining fertility rates will cause the world's population to fall in the second half of the century. And some argue that technological advances will ensure that the next generation's environmental footprint is smaller than our own. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, well, you know, I was talking to the fellow who was, uh, he's 64. This, this, this dude is 64 years old. His wife is 33, he has a four-year-old, and his wife is pregnant. His 33-year-old wife is pregnant, and uh, we were talking about, uh, you know, he wants his kids to go into uh, basically what, what he does, uh, you know, working with his big, heavy machinery, and uh, he wasn't a hundred, but he's hoping that uh, by the time uh, his kids are ready to get into the business in 20 or you know 20 years from now that uh, they will just be making boatloads of money doing it but he doesn't rule out that the industry you know these giant planet eating machines like the one uh, you know uh, getting bugs in a jar farm ready for the apocalypse will exist and I said, well, maybe your children will be blacksmiths uh, or harness makers for horses. And he's not ruling that out. So there is a chance 
that uh, the, the future generations will have a smaller environmental footprint than ours, but it's going to have nothing to do with voluntary lifestyle and consumer choices. Anyway, despite all of that crap, Ms. Campbell argues that consumers will be attracted to environmentally friendly digital children, referring to the virtual pets. And for guys, I don't know if you, how many of you have figured out that Sancho Panza is a virtual dog. He is a virtual dog. Yes. <clears throat> referring to the virtual pets that were created in Japan and became a craze among Western children in the late 1990s and early 2000s, she said, quote, we are already well on our way to creating the Tamagotchi generation, which for all intents and purposes will be real to their parents on the basis that consumer demand is there, which I think it will be, AI children will become widely available for a relatively small monthly fee. Make no mistake, this is still Ms. Campbell, make no mistake that this development, should it indeed take place, are you sleeping on Tigger? <clears throat> should it indeed take place, is a technological game changer which, if managed correctly, could help us solve some of today's most pressing issues, including overpopulation. Close quote. Hallelujah. You tell them, Ms. Campbell, and you tell them the Telegraph. I, I do not believe it. We have the mainstream media calling overpopulation one of today's most pressing issues, and we're going to solve it with virtual children. Ms. Campbell said that through computer-generated imaging and advanced machine learning, digital ch children will have photorealistic faces and bodies and they will be able to recognize and respond to their parents using facial tracking and voice analysis. They will be capable of speech and simulated emotional responses encompassing, encompassing a baby's coo, a baby's coo, a child's giggle, and a teenager's back chat. I have never heard the word B-A-C-K-C-H-A-T. A teenager's back chat. Their parents will be able to interact with them in digital environments of their choosing, such as a sitting room, park, or swimming pool. They will also be able to choose how quickly their digital children grow up, if at all. So you can, you know, you can just make your digital child any age you want to. Uh, they don't, they don't eat, they don't shit, they don't piss, uh, they don't breed. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm all for these. I, you know, I have had the fantasy. I've, I've had the rant that if, that if humans, I mean, what really is it about humans? That is the problem. It's three body parts. It is the mouth, the anus, and the gonads. You take away the mouth, the anus, and the gonads, and problem solved. There you go. Uh, now, I don't know whether they virtually poop or not. A proof of concept for virtual children already exists in the form of Baby X, 
an experiment by New Zealand-based company Soul Machines. That project's aim is to humanize AI so that it is more appealing for the public to interact with. And we have 180 comments. Uh, let's see. This here from Lloyd. I cannot even describe how horrible this is. Delusion becomes reality. Love becomes a one-way feeling, not part of a relationship. I guess this is like auto-love because the virtual infant is programmed so that the virtual parent feels and responds with love. This seems worse than Corona Panic. Yes, reduce the population by having billions of people who parent an illusion. Glad I will not be around to see it. Yes. Uh, boy. <laughs> Here we go, Dave. Uh, I don't really know what this has to do with this article. But I like this. Uh, our economy, as most in the world, is based on growth. Just by definition, we cannot grow forever and seemingly and are seemingly not far from needing growth to stop. Okay, here is I predict that this prediction will not go anywhere. Uh, here is, hopefully, there will be virtual counselors to help people who accidentally neglect their Tamagotchi children. I can't tell you how depressed I was when my Tamagotchi died because I took off with friends for a weekend. Yes. Okay, I, I I heard somebody else in the Doom is Fair just a few days ago talking about virtual sexual assault. There was some Doomer just talking about uh, laughing off the notion of virtual sexual assault. There is William. Okay, this is just messed up. This is worse than acting like VR sexual assault is real assault. This will legitimately cause addictions to the VR world and psychosis due to the feelings of raising your VR child being actual neurological activity that exists. Yes. If the addict lost power for a week, they would begin breaking down as if a real biological child has died. This is wrong on so many levels. And we're going to wind up with Robert. Take it away, Robert, to wind up on this. I mentioned in a comment a few years ago that our planet was getting overpopulated and that Mother Earth could only sustain so many people. Other commenters scoffed at my comment, but just stop and think about it. There were 1 billion people on this planet in 1884. There were 7 billion in 2012. Not sure what the population of the, wor of the Earth is now in 2022. Look at how many people live on Earth now, and then think how many more will be here in the next 100 years. If you think 
the freeways are clogged now, just wait. If you think starvation is bad in third world countries now, just wait. If you think food is hard to get now, just wait. The planet just may not survive humans' demand for fossil fuels. Yes, I won't be here to see it, but some of you may. <laughs> All these people. Is that the second comment? Type? You know, people uh, talking about how glad they're going to be dead uh, as the future unfolds. Uh, something to look forward to dying before the future gets there. But anyway, I think my uh, my guests from Austin, Texas might be uh, returning from their big night out partying in Ithaca. 43 degrees here tonight. Good Lord. 43 degrees. Check out the weather forecast for Austin, Texas, and uh, well, I guess the whole state of Texas. So uh, it's pretty certain that Texas will use more power, more electricity next week than any time in history that the Texas grid is going to be tested in a few days more than any time in history. And uh, that is why this uh, smart woman got the hell out of Texas and came to Bugs in a Jar Farm. And I highly suggest uh, you get the hell out of Texas and come visit me and the little dog at Bugs in a Jar. Just bring your goose down best. Bye, guys. Ah, oh, yes, you little virtual dog, you little VR fur baby, my little virtual fur baby, oh yes.